the bell icon to turn on notifications. So the first thing we need to do here is we need to get ourselves some data. Otherwise, we can't do any formulas or any visualizations. And the first data that we're going to import into Power BI are those four transactional sales files that we have stored in a folder. Now I'm going to go reasonably quickly through this section because a lot of this was covered in that beginner's course. So this really serves as a nice recap to ease you into this session. And also, if you haven't done the beginner's course, then you're going to understand how importing and transforming works as well. So hopefully everyone is a winner. So let's go to the Home tab and we're going to choose Get Data. Now, because I have these files in a folder, I can import the entire folder. So I can't see folder in this list of common data sources. So I'm going to select more at the bottom. And this opens up the Get Data pane. And you can see just how many sources we have. You can literally import data from so many different systems and applications. Now, for us, we have our stored very simply in a folder. I can see folder just here. So let's select and click Connect at the bottom. Now, this is going to open up a little window that is going to ask me to provide the folder path. So I basically just have to navigate to it by pressing the Browse button. Now I can make this window a little bit bigger. So now I just need to navigate to where I have these files stored. So there we go. There is my folder. It's called sales data. I'm going to select it. Now, remember, this will be different for you depending on where you've downloaded those files to. You might have them in a folder on your desktop. If so, navigate to there. Select the folder and click on OK and then click on OK again. So what you're going to see now is a window pop up, which is basically going to list out all of the files contained within that folder. And I can see there I have my sales files 2016 to 2019. I can see their CSVs. All looks good. So what is the next step from here? Well, we have some action buttons down the bottom. I could choose to combine these files, load them directly into Power BI, or I could transform the data first. Now, a good habit to get into is always going into transform data because this is going to open up Power Query where you can then make changes to these files before you import them into Power BI. And you can also make all different kinds of transformations. If you need to add columns or clean up the data, remove things, you can do it from here. So it's always good to click transform data when you're importing. Notice that I am now in the Power Query Editor. So this is another part of Power BI. And Power Query, as I said, essentially allows you to tidy up and clean your data so it's in a really nice state before you load it into Power BI. And cleaning data is so important when we're going to analyze it because we don't want things like blank rows or incorrect formatting in our data because it's going to give us inaccurate analysis results. Now, the four files that you can see in Power Query at the moment are the only four files that I had in my sales data folder. However, if you've got files that you want to use contained within a folder and that folder also contains other files that you don't necessarily want to import, if you see these files listed here because you've chosen to import everything in the folder, you can filter those files out simply by clicking the extension drop down. And for example, if you had some PDFs or Excel files in here, they would all be listed and you can simply uncheck the box and then those won't be analyzed in Power Query or imported into Power BI. So that's a good little tip. So get yourself to this stage. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how we can combine all of these files into one file because these are essentially the same. They all have the same layout as in the same column headings. They just contain different data. So we're going to put these in one big file and call it sales. So get yourself to this stage and then I'll see you in the next lesson. So in the last lesson, we imported our four sales files and we're now going to transform them in Power Query. And I mentioned that because these files are all effectively the same with the same columns, we're going to combine all of them together into one big file so that we don't have four separate files to import. Now, combining files in Power Query is very simple. Take a look at the first column titled content. 
notice that we have these two arrows, this little icon. And as I hover my mouse over those arrows, it says combine files. So to combine all of these together, all we need to do is click on this button. The Combine Files window will open and it's going to show you a preview based on the first 200 rows of that first file. So I'm looking at all of the data, the first 200 rows of the 2016 sales data file. And this is really just to give you an idea as to what that data is going to look like. And of course, if you want to view the first 200 rows of any of these files, if you click the drop down just here, you can switch to any of the sales files to get a preview of what the first 200 rows will look like. Now I'm happy with this, so let's click on OK to combine those together. So it's now combined those files together and I'm looking at that combined data file. Take a look on the left hand side, you can see I have my queries pane just here. And most of these queries have been generated for me by Power Query. The only one that I'm interested in is the one that I'm currently working on, which is sales data just here. And it's named this query based on the folder name that I imported the files from. And we're going to rename this query in a moment to something a bit more meaningful. Notice over on the right hand side, this is where we have the properties. So this is in fact where we can rename this query if we need to. And then underneath we have our applied steps and applied steps basically tracks everything that you're doing in Power Query. And this is a really useful little pane because if you make a change to your data in Power Query and you want to undo that or backtrack to the file in an earlier state, you can simply click on the cross in the Applied Steps pane to backtrack through the changes that you've made. So now that we have our data in one big long file in Power Query, let's start to tidy it up before we import it into Power BI. Now, one of the main things you want to make sure that you're doing when you're dealing with large files like this is you really want to make your data as efficient as possible so that it's fast to load and also fast to interrogate with things like formulas. So you really want to take the time to go through your data, removing any columns which aren't going to be needed in the final analysis and generally tidying things up. So that's what we're going to do over the next few lessons. But let's just remove any columns from this data that we're not going to need. Now, as I scroll across, I am going to need pretty much all of these columns in my final analysis. However, the first column here where it says source name, this is just showing me the file name. Now, I don't really need that anymore because we've combined these into one big file. I already have a date column here, which is showing me the year as well. So I'm going to get rid of this source name column simple process, right click on the column and select remove. Notice that when I've done that, now in the applied steps pane, the last action I took is to remove columns. If I decided that I wanted that column back again, I could click the cross and it reappears. So just be aware of that. Now looking at this data, I can see that there are some other changes that I'm going to need to make. For example, if we look at the product column just here, what I have in here is the product. So if we take this first line as an example, chicken for heat and wrap, but then after that in brackets, we have basically the location of the store. Now this isn't the ideal way to have this data. I'm really going to want to break this up. So that's exactly what we're going to do in the next lesson. I'm going to show you some techniques you can use when you have to split data across columns and also how you can merge data from multiple columns into one. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at how we can split and merge column data. And I introduced the example that we're going to use in the last lesson. And that is we need to make some changes to this product column because currently we have both the product and the location listed in this column. Now, why is that a problem? Well, really, it's just going to make your data a lot more difficult to analyze. For example, if I wanted to analyze this data by location, maybe I was interested in seeing the total profit by location, that's going to be quite difficult for me to do if I have the location combined with the product in one cell. It's going to be hard for me to interrogate. It's much better to have separate pieces of information in separate columns. So really, we want the product in one column and the location in another. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to use a couple of techniques in Power Query to break up this column into two separate columns. First thing you need to do, select the column that you want to split up. From the Home tab in the Transform group, we have a split column option. And we have a number of different ways that we can split this data. Now, which one you choose really depends on the kind of data that you have in your column. Now, I can see here that my product and my location are separated with a space. So I want to separate this by that space in the middle. And we call things like spaces, dashes, tabs. Those are referred to as delimiters. So I'm going to split mine by delimiter. So what I can now do is go in and select the delimiter that I want to use. So for example, if I had the product and the location separated with a comma, I could choose a comma or a colon or a space or a tab. Now I'm going to choose custom and define where I want to split them myself. So I want to split where we have a space and then an open bracket. And I want to split at each occurrence of this delimiter because I can see that I only have one occurrence of this delimiter in each item. Let's click on OK and let the magic happen. So take a look at our data now. We have two columns, product one and currently product two. I have my products in one column. I have my locations in another, but notice that I still have that closing bracket. So I'm going to need to get rid of that as well. Now we can get rid of this using a simple replace. So let's click this column again up to the transform group and into replace values. So this is very much like your regular standard find and replace. I just need to determine what my value to find is and what I want to replace it with. So I want Power BI to find in this column the closing bracket and I want to replace it with nothing. So I'm going to leave this box blank. Click on OK and like magic I've got rid of those closing brackets. So very straightforward. Now what I want to do is just rename these column headings so that they make more sense. So we can double click in the heading and I'm going to change this to location and hit enter. And let's double click in this heading and I just want this to be called product, not product one. And there we go. Very quickly, we've managed to break up that data. Now, what if I wanted to do the reverse of this? Maybe I have information contained within two separate columns that I want to merge together. Well, again, this is very simple. We can select both of the columns, go to the transform tab. And in the middle here, we have a merge columns option. So the first thing I need to do here is define how I want to separate these columns. So what is my separator going to be? So if I wanted a comma or a colon or a space, I could choose it from here. I could even add again my own custom delimiter. So let's go for that and say that I want these split up with a space dash space. I can then choose what I want my new column name to be called. So let's just say product and location as the name. Click on OK. And now take a look at what I have. I have a new column and I have my product and my location separated with a dash. So super simple to split and merge columns. Now, I don't want these columns merged. I actually do want them split. So what I can do is go across to my applied steps and just backtrack until I get back to those two separate columns. So let's click the cross and that's going to unmerge those columns. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there and click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.